Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Fun Valley, an end-to-end -end mega park. And while it only contains three themed areas, they are the largest I have ever seen, spanning one third of the entirety of this end-to-end -end mega park. We have the Frozone, the Forbidden Jungle, and the Ship wrecked lagoon so we have a bit of a alpine winter area an adventure jungle and a pirate three underutilized and underrated themes taken over the top to create a massive sprawling adventure that you're not going to want to miss out on so stay tuned and let's check it out Hey yo, my planet coaster friends, Johnny Five Alive here, and welcome back to another episode of Park Spotlight. Today we're gonna be looking at Fun Valley created by Alien Queen93, a non-Discord member as well, yet again. Uh, links are down in the description below. Come join us on Discord, especially if you play the game. You guys are not gonna want to miss out on it. And uh, here they say, welcome to Fun Valley, where the fun never ends. I've spent the last 10 months creating this massive park, and I will admit, it being my first park, I went a little bit overboard. I started with the jungle area in the dead center and figured the rest out along the way. I had no real plans for this park as far as their themes, locations, etc. It features 10 coasters, a boat ride, a log flume, and many, many flat rides along the three themed areas, the Forbidden Jungle, Frozone, and Shipwreck Lagoon, as I mentioned at the top of the video, along with other smaller themed areas in between. You can explore this park however you wish. It looks amazing in day or night. Please do not hold back on the critique for my park. I want to know where I can improve so for my next park, I can be even better. I've enjoyed watching your channel and laughing at your commentary and several uh, over the last several months. Anyways, enjoy the park. All right, very fun introduction there, guys. Very exciting stuff. Alien Queen, a name I do not recognize, as they did mention it's their first creation ever, but I also don't recognize their name from Discord because they're not in it. So come join us on Discord Alien Queen. Links are down in the description below. Everybody's welcome, even if you don't play the game. Somebody on YouTube in the comments, I do read your guys' comments. Somebody said, some of the best creations often come from the... Uh, viewers rather than the community members. Uh, a lot of people just kind of watch on the sidelines, enjoy the content, and randomly decide to submit something for themselves. They're not really a part of the community, just on the sides of the community, appearing from a distance, living vicariously, and then they jump in and make a big splash with their magnificent creations. And that's what we're seeing here today with Alien Queen 33 or 93, uh, as they said, they uh, have been enjoying the show over the last several months. Well, guess what, Alien Queen? You've only been watching for a couple months, and this is one of the newer submissions, as I did uh, get submitted um, the day before Christmas. So it's only a few months old, and uh, we're showcasing it here today. So they've only been watching for a few months, <laughs> and boom right right to the front of the line enough of the jibber jabber let's jump into the episode and have some fun in fun valley all right welcome welcome ladies and gentlemen from the looks of things we have four thousand guests in the park i didn't even check this is there a limit 4,500. Okay, so we've hit that limit. Actually, a little bit more than what i'm used to uh letting in i usually let in like 3,000 or so but as you guys would have saw from the b-roll and i'll show you again right here this is literally end to end you can see it's cut off by the borders this crater just went bananas on on creating everything they said in the description that they started with the forbidden jungle and then added stuff in between and while i did advertise this as three major themed areas they said they sprinkled some in between so uh what we do see here is like a little uh chinese area as well so there's more than just the three that are advertised they added some in between so that'll be fun for us to discover along the way but a beautiful park entrance a double park entrance you got the fun valley but then you have entrances to each of the three major themed areas they said they created this park with the forbidden jungle and they allowed me to explore it however i like so i think it would be best suited if we start where they started as they started in the center of the park and started building out from there 
it's always fun to see the evolution of these creators designs and then kind of like where they went from the end of it because these they said they spent 10 months on these and that is actually surprisingly short for an end-to-end -end mega park most of these creators are spending years on these and uh they did this all themselves i mean they did this in about the same time that we did project planko and they did it alone so Forbidden Jungle, a big, bold park entrance area for this themed area. And uh, this is where I want to start. Already I can hear some music, some ambience. We see some coasters up above, some really intricate pathways. It's looking fantastic. Sunlight's coming in here. It's looking very vibrant and fun, very tropical. They said they sprinkled in a lot of flat rides. We have a little bit of a Monte Leone spinning flat ride over here. And let's check out the views from up here at the footpath. A lot of crazy looking coasters, 10 of them to be exact. And they don't look to be slouching in their duration or elements. They look a little bit over the top. And I'm pretty excited to uh, take a closer look. The lift hill goes all the way up to this temple here. I'm assuming it's the temple run and these people are getting off. Although maybe not because the lift... I'm not sure what that is. We're going to have to discover this together. Fun little huts here to get some food. Professor Worst. Look how decorative these little shops are. Very good so far. We have an RMC here. I'm not seeing any queues. We're passing through here. Nothing's calling me. Uh, very interesting that we entered into the park entrance area and there's not a queue to be found anywhere unless i pass by one and you guys are screaming at your monitors let me know down in the comments below <laughs> but the temple run all the way over here same with the jungle views might be a boat ride of sorts um i don't think there's any rule book on how you should design parks but I will say one thing's for certain when I enter into a themed area, one thing that uh, I find is particularly impressive is once you, you know, pass under the signs, get into the area and you go, oh, look, there's the temple run over there. Oh, look, there's that thing over there. And you do these like really vibrant and beautiful signs like you had for this coaster here. But right there as we're entering into the area, because then I kind of I walk into the area and I can start to assess the situation. Where do I want to go? What is calling me? Right. And in this particular case, I was sort of just forced to keep going and discover whatever I find. And it didn't really feel like a choice, but rather a discovery. So I don't know if that's a critique or not. Take it as you will. What do you prefer discoveries or having a choice in uh, seeing all your options there? That is quite up to you. And this creator's just decided to go with the more discovery aspect. So we have the uh, in gig Giga Coaster here, one kilometer in duration, 77 miles per hour. The biggest drop being 60 meters and a little bit of airtime on this, not too much. So I'll cut to it when it's ready and we'll check it out. All right, this is uh, the lift that we saw from back in the distance going up into the temple. Very immersive and uh, beautiful looking lift hill here. I quite like this. Let's, uh, let's check it out. Good googly moogly, ladies and gentlemen. Kicking things off with a bang is this Giga Coaster. I usually like to give you guys a couple perspectives, and uh, I'm really curious about the nighttime lighting here because we're seeing these torches everywhere. Uh, that door is going berserk, by the way. I don't know if the creator knew how to do triggers properly, but it's just opening and closing. But there's an extraordinary amount of theming on this here coaster, and this is just the first of ten, uh, yeah, ten, nine more to go, ten total, and that was 
was uh, pretty darn impressive, if I say so myself. Let's go. Let's see it again at night. A very nice experience at nighttime as well. A beautiful, well-lit orange glow, orange hue to all of these areas. A very immersive traversal throughout uh, this entire jungle area, taking us on a bit of an adventure. Very, very good start. I mean, we probably should walk around a little bit more. I'm going down the queue. Should walk around a little bit more at nighttime and see what else this jungle has to offer in terms of lighting. But a spectacular start to what appears to be a, a, a spectacular spectacular end-to-end -end mega park uh so strap up get yourself some snacks and drinks because we're gonna be here for a hot minute riding all sorts of amazing stuff all right so this is what i'm talking about when i was previously t uh saying how i kind of walk into a park area and i want to see all these choices i see the ring of fire over there beautiful grill something's going on over there uh we had the uh, temple run over here i almost feel like this should be the park entrance because I have all these choices and, and I'm going, what do I want to do? That's just, it's a personal preference rather than a critique, if anything. But I do think there is something to say for going into an area and being like, just bewildered with options. So what do you guys think? Uh, do you agree with that or not? I think uh, having all of those choices up front and center, provoking you to head in a certain direction or area better suits uh, all that for the park entrance or the uh, area. Ah, this little shack here is, in fact, the queue. We went so deep into the jungle that I didn't think that was it. Uh, this boat ride looks really, really awesome. Not often do I love going on these. It depends on how you do it. Some people just have them kind of putzing around a lake, which is um, great for taking a look at the park. But if you're going to go around the whole park anyways, it doesn't really add anything. But what this crater has done, ooh, I like the way you painted the moss on the walls of the terrain here. What this crater has done is created a bit more of a, an actual adventure. All of the stuff that we're looking at here, other than, I guess, now going past this coaster, but what we've been through so far has been the swampy back areas of the jungle that you can't really traverse by foot, and you can't really get a good view or look at from the perspective of the uh, the rides and attractions. So this boat ride here actually offers something unique that is a an experience, and I like that. And sometimes people like to use them as actual transport rides. I much prefer this. While the boats do serve as a good way to uh, transport people around the park, I often find that uh, creating an experience like this is much more enjoyable less stops, less waiting, that sort of thing. Plus, if you want to transport somebody a putsy little boat here, it's probably not the best way to do it. <laughs> I think it's much more efficient to use a train or a monorail. Gets the job done. You can go long distances pretty fast. But yeah, this is uh, really quite cool. I like what I'm seeing here. Great little uh, jungle boat ride. Beautiful views, great waterfalls as well. And there's the uh, coaster that we just went on and back into the little shanty shack. Love it. Solid, solid stuff. Okay, what else does this area of the park have to offer? I saw all sorts of stuff. The Ring of Fire, I'm going to assume, is the Helion Ring? Helion Ring? Not sure what it's called or how to say it. But that's what I'm going to guess it is. Pizza pen. We got some barbecue ribs. Um, I didn't even realize this thing was in the game. I barely see it used. But, like, you could do a, a just ribbon barbecue ribs within the Tiki Cheeky Fire area. And I've actually never really seen anyone do that or thought about that before. But they actually work together quite cohesively. 
And, uh, you know, we just worked on Project Planko. We did just Ribbon as a, a biker guy in the city. That's the theme that we decided to go with the personality and characteristics of the just Ribbon uh, mascot. But I think it works very, very well over in the Tiki jungle area as well. So interesting uh, to see other people's takes and concepts on some of these different vendors. Really, really cool. All right, I'm assuming this is the log flume based off the sounds. Yeah. It's uh, backed up. It is backed up. All right, Chopper's Creek log flume. One's taken off. Let's get on this guy. This is the one I'm looking for. I like to do the pop-up view. The kids are having fun in Fun Valley. Very beautiful park so far. I like the uh, the depth gone into the themed areas. Generally, when we go to these mega parks, the themed areas are pretty short. But the vastness of this adventure area is pretty big. The pirate area looks phenomenal and massive. There's the RMC there. And a giant winter area that I'm pretty excited about. Uh, this is kind of interesting. I like this. The River Rapids is taking us on a tour underneath all the coaster tracks. Generally, they they uh traditionally go around the scenic areas a bit more. Having us kind of uh, surrounded by all this coaster is kind of overwhelming and awesome. I like it. It's getting me excited to go on that RMC. Wow, look at all of this, you guys. I can barely hear myself think. Let me get this down a little bit. Um... Yeah, what I was trying to say is that uh, normally they go on like these like scenic rides, but there is no scenery, or I guess there's no op there's no breathing room. There's just stuff everywhere. So wherever you run this log flume, there's just going to be uh, so much to look at in terms of coasters and queues and all of that. There's no room left in this park for mountains, hills, and just breathing room. It's quite literally just stuff, end, end, end. But not, it's all methodically placed. It's pretty well done. So far from what I've seen. And here we go. Thud. <laughs> that was uh, shorter than I expected. Much shorter than I expected, but uh, we got to look at the RMC there. Okay, so is there another side to this western jungle area? We had to go on a little bit of a truck to get back here. Um, did I pass by anything on the way out? Because, yeah, we might be able to go up that way as well. Is this RMC a part of, uh, wow, our jungle theme? I'm thinking it is. Here we go. So, yeah, that entrance area kind of serves to fork off into two different areas here which you've chosen to put an observatory over here oh miss mount mount tiki i think that's gonna be our our steel top where does this lead us though i'm kind of curious does this lead us back to the uh park entrance here <laughs> I've also been kind of sick, so if I sound a little bit different today, I've been sick over the last week. Uh, Gulpy. That looks rad. A Gulpy Tiki area. That is, uh... Gulpy doesn't get enough spotlights either <clears throat> in the jungle areas. So I love to see that. Where does this take us? Back to Mount Tiki. There's definitely a lot of pathways. Um, 
I definitely think some of the areas can be condensed a little bit. Well, that's okay. Mount Tiki. Lots to explore, lots to look at. Generally, though, I like to kind of, when I, I walk around and explore, it's always good to get a destination, right? Um, there's a lot of forking paths over there that kind of just lead you back to the same stuff. Okay, Steel Avengeance, Steel Top Coaster, also one kilometer in length, 67 miles per hour, 42 meters is the biggest drop. A little bit more airtime on this one than the previous coaster, but uh, I love to see it. I love to see these one kilometer long coasters. You get to sit back and enjoy the experience, and that is what we're going to do here. How should we ride this? I'm actually good with this view right here, but maybe I could go further back? Yeah, why don't we try that out? This person's head is in the way. So is... Let's go with this one. Right in the middle. Why not? Lots of torches on this. I think we're going to have to do this at nighttime as well. I'll give you guys the track view for that. There's the pirate area looking amazing over there. Let's go. Holy freaking Toledo's a pretty awesome experience overall and I have to take a look at this. Where is that? Holy good googly moogly. Look at this. That is really well done. I didn't even notice that during the day run. Uh, that looks super captivating at night. I love the way you lit that. That looks phenomenal. Does the log flume see that? No, it doesn't. Oh, that's too bad feel like the log flume should be going the other way this whole volcano was built just for you know the scenery of the the um steel top here i would have liked to pass around it a couple more times and see a few uh triggered events kind of some <laughs> lava bursting out or gurgling out as we go by that sort of thing yeah uh, as it was so nicely well constructed but <clears throat> looking good all right well since we're here we might as well check this mini themed china area out here we go Another massive coaster to check out. Lighting's pretty good. Although I think I'd much prefer to see this area during the day. All the vibrant reds and stuff. Hip shot water. I feel like I recognize some of these uh, towers and buildings. What I'm going to assume is the creator may have taken certain things off the workshop. Uh, to help. Oh, the, the observatory is over here. To help them, you know, get this stuff built. And that is completely fine. If you guys want to build theme parks and send them in and have me explore them. And, and you use, you know, other people's creations. Like, little creations. Shops. Facilities. That sort of thing. To pad out your park. To fill out your park. That's completely fine. 
I think that's actually more efficient than doing everything yourself <clears throat> because you can build them in a much shorter time. Right? And it helps you get it done. But I much... I think it's... I suggest that you build all the coasters yourself. Try not to grab coasters off the workshop that other people have made. Um, apparently, like a few parks ago, I rode and reviewed... Somebody said in the comments that I rode and reviewed a coaster that was one of the ones you get with the game. <laughs> like, one of the pre-made ones. And I was, I thought it was funny because I don't even know what the pre-made coasters in the game are. I'm so used to uh, seeing everybody build them themselves, I wouldn't even be able to recognize if it was a base default coaster from the game. But what that creator had done, and I, rec I recommend this to anyone that's going to use one that's, you know, out of the box from the game, or something that, you know, if you're not that good at designing coasters, you definitely can take other people's coasters and use them and still make an amazing theme park. It's just they're not going to be as well integrated as if you did it yourself. But if you do all the theming yourself, right, you can make it work. You can integrate it and build the, ter the terrain and scenery around it and make it feel like it belongs here. So as long as you do that, uh, then then I'm okay with it. It's just gonna take a little bit extra work to a point where you probably would have been better off just trying to make the coaster yourself and learning how to get good at that. All right, so here we are. We have another Giga coaster here, 1.2 kilometers in length, 80 miles per hour, making it the fastest coaster in the park thus far. And I think 62 meters would also be the biggest drop out of any of them. And uh, there's a look at the rest of the results if you'd like to see them. And we're gonna go track view for daytime on this one. Absolutely stunning. I much preferred the night run on that coaster other than that last bit there could have used a few more Lanterns in that area, but holy good googly moogly have they been Transformative both offering a great experience at day and night and I like what this creator has done with these coasters Integrating them into all of the scenery and aesthetics everything that we see that we're walking through on foot The coasters either touch by go in through around some way or another letting us really get a look at everything in the park from the perspective of the coaster. Now, this whole area here, it seems to just serve as a bunch of shops and then for that coaster. I'm not mad at it, but it is a pretty large and sprawling area from what I can see here that goes all the way back to the park entrance. But the only thing we get to really interact with is that coaster. There's a lot of stuff built here. It's basically one giant thematic area for the purpose of that one entire 
entire coaster. That's pretty uh, badass. That is a lot of theming. But now we're going into the pirate area. I'm pretty stoked about this. It looks crazy. We have a giant invert right there. And Pirate, I've said it time and time again, very underrated, underused. And in fact, one of the reasons I chose this creation here today is because I saw a very large emphasis on that of the Pirate. Look at how beautiful it is. You have the sandy shores, all the custom woodwork. You can get really vibrant with the coasters, going with these blue tracks and then the green foliage. It's just so vibrant and, and inviting. It's amazing. I love me some good pirate areas. Okay, there's the barbecue ribs back at it over here. Let's uh, check out the deep blue. Love the big shark up front. That's very fun. Great work at the uh, back of the park here. Livening that up. All the uh, beaches and stuff. Look at that. Incredible. Big giant Woody in the back there. A flying coaster as well. That might be what we're going on here. I think it is based off these supports. Mm-hmm. Cool. Let's see what it has to offer. 1.2 kilometers in length. Didn't expect anything else from this creator from this point. 70 miles per hour. 50 meters is the biggest drop. Fairly fast flying coaster. Pretty excited about this. We're going to have to go seat view, middle seat. I'm going to tilt the camera down just a little bit so we can feel that flying. Let's go. Alright, I'm gonna try one more view. I don't think the coaster is gonna be lit for nighttime. I could double check, but yeah, it doesn't appear to be. So we're gonna do something a little bit different in the orbit view. Oh, I'm at nighttime still. Whoops. Gonna go orbit view. I wanna take a look at some of that terrain and scenery as uh, we can turn the camera around from here. Let's check this out. cool let's freaking go absolutely incredible let's keep on keeping on we have a lot to explore here in this pirate area <laughs> i love this archway i'm mean, going under it is giving me ptsd from uh park beyond as you try to pass under terrain in that game the camera will pop up oh my god that was driving me nuts <laughs> Great integration. Love it. 
All right, let's find our way over to either the Woody or the Invert. We have Skull Mountain here. I'm going to assume that is the Woody. Absolutely, there's a skull at the top of that mountain. Wow, this is looking cool. All right, up into the Caribbean castle here. What do we have going on here? 1.2 kilometers in length, very consistent. Uh, each coaster being minimum one kilometer, almost exactly each of them across the board. A lot more airtime, the most airtime out of all the coasters on this one, as it should be for a good Woody. 71 miles per hour, 50 meters is the biggest drop. We're going seat view. We might be doing this one at nighttime as well. Absolutely incredible terrain work over here and detailing. Love the uh, Caribbean castles. They're not easy to do well. I think those look outstanding. We gotta, we gotta check this out at night. That's very cinematic. There's like a little pirate shootout going on. Again, I have to commend this creator on their creativity on making these coaster experiences exactly that, experiences, right? They're not just building a coaster layout and then trying to fit it into a themed area. It really feels like the entire areas are almost built around the coasters. Like we're going through everything that these areas have to offer during the experiences of the coasters themselves. And that is awesome. I feel like we're basically doing coaster spotlights, exploration coaster spotlights, but just layered on top of each other, like a lot of them. It's awesome. There's like more coaster theming than there is park. Yeah, again, I'll reiterate on that previous point. Uh, the, the fact that there's like almost more coaster theming than there is park. As I mentioned with the, uh, the Chinese area over there, the entire area was pretty much built for the theming of that one giga coaster. And uh, you're starting to see that a little bit more as we explore deeper to this park. Pretty much half of this pirate area is for that uh, flying coaster and Woody combined, just to give you the views and all of the, the theming and decorations as you pass by, with a little bit of filler and shops in between, which are also extremely well done. Like this little um, barrel roll ride is extremely well integrated. But as, as much path work as there is, I made this comment earlier that it felt so, like some there might have been too much path work in one of the uh, adventure areas. And it's just like you need all that to get around all of this theming. 
that has been built for these coasters. It's crazy. It's almost like we're going around them all rather than through them, right? Which is definitely a different take on theme park design than what we've seen in the past, and I like it. It's offering something a little bit different in terms of feel, layout, and walk around experience. Been pretty awesome. All right, so we have arrived at the inverted coaster here. Just a look at the pirate area from above at the queue. So is this gonna go through the jungle a little bit too? What's going on here? One kilometer in length, <laughs> seven inversions, 56 miles per hour. There it is. We're going seat view again. Let's check this out. Is there, is there a queue above us? We're gonna ride that one once. Oh no, wait, the, oh, this is what's going on. The queue passes above. I didn't even notice that as we we're walking up there. I only noticed it as we we're coming in that we're going underneath. Uh, that's actually a pretty intricate and cool looking boarding station. The, it's a little bit redundant to use a flying coaster and an inverted coaster, but I thought you did enough to separate them to make them feel different. It didn't really give me lockjaw vibes that much, but we did pass by more of the piratey stuff on this side of the park, whereas the flying coaster was more about the beaches. So again, they do feel different enough, but definitely uh, would have liked to see, I don't know, just a use of something else for Lockjaw, maybe a boat ride, you know, a little bit too samey, but still offered a good amount of theming and variety between the two of them, for sure. Okay, well, looks like we're gonna be heading on into this gigantic Frozo, is what they call it, Frozone, big giant, alpine frozen area of the park and a big sprawling one at that and we have the northern lights right out of the get-go so we're gonna have to turn it to nighttime here we also have uh the north pole christmas village so they put some christmas theming in here i like this concept of going with like three massive themed areas and then a few tertiary ones along the way sprinkled in and I'm wondering how you could push that further and uh, accentuate that a little bit more. Like the, the Chinese area didn't really fit mixed in to the lockjaw area, kind of just felt tacked onto the side and didn't really have any cohesion with anything else. I'm wondering like how many themes are in adventure alone and how can you accentuate that a little bit further? Have a little temple area, have a little swamp area, a jungle area, tiki area, you know, that sort of thing. A little pirate area cove off the side. And how can you do that with other larger themes, grouping more sub themes within them? And I like that concept. So hopefully it gets some people thinking creatively. Definitely with the winter, you have the Alpine, the Rocky Mountains, uh, the Christmas villages, and that sort of thing. Can you take it a little bit further? Is there any other crazy frozen themes you can come up with? with i don't know northern lights is a cool idea i like the lighting in here the neon and purple uh teal very very cool so a four-seated inverted rival yet again i see this just under a kilometer our shortest coaster so far wah, wah, wah. Uh, this creator definitely loves their inverted tracks this is the third of the day not mad at it I feel like they're probably not used as often in comparison to the other choices that the game has. So pretty cool. Wow, look at this. Let's freaking go.
Wow, definitely really well lit. I definitely feel like maybe you could have somehow put in a bit of a light show or like an Aurora Borealis somewhere, maybe when we're flipping up on our heads or something, uh, where you could just, what you did with the station here, I would have loved to see a little bit of that somewhere on the coaster itself. Maybe done it right up here, have all these um, spotlights, floodlights beaming up at us and just create like a small um, sequencer on there so they pulse a little bit just to give us a little bit of that Northern Lights light show. Let's check it out again at night or daytime and I'll, I'll do the, uh, no, I'll just, I'll do seat view again. Yeah, why not? All right, there it is from the looks of it. I think I spotted another Giga Coaster, Hyper Coaster of some sort from uh, the perspective of this one here. Here's a look at everything at daytime. I like this mixture of winter fantasy. Yeah, that's, that's different. Mystic Adventure. Huh. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's kind of funny because we generally categorize like alpine winter theme christmas stuff with the more winter style themes but like snow and cold weather is just cold weather i actually feel like this is the first time i've ever seen a cold weather fantasy area in a theme park before which is like really odd to think about right why can't you have a frozen fantasy area in a park. Although, I would take that one step further. Instead of doing these Caribbean style castle walls, I would have gone with like the vinyl white or yeah, like I don't have my blueprints on me, but I made this like crystal castle a long time ago. And you could do like some really cool white castles to, to go into this frozen area of the park and make a frozen fantasy. That's a fun idea. Yeah, let's uh let's make more frozen parks, you guys. What do we got going on here? 1.15 kilometers in length. It's the Mystic Adventure. Uh 72 miles per hour and it's a launched drive tire. I think we got to check out track view at daytime. I have a feeling it's going to have a lot of nighttime lighting as per usual from the coaster so far and let's go. Wowee, I thoroughly enjoyed the visuals on that. Oh my goodness, that's uh, really quite fascinating. Having the uh, frozen fantasy, seeing the fantasy assets for one in a frozen uh, environment is really freaking cool. But again, to what I've said already a few times, this creator has done a fantastic job at uh, making these coasters very explorative. There's tons of theming everywhere we go, everywhere we look, and fantasy and frozen fantasy is really cool. I love this. Uh, the pink tracks, you had the vibrant pinks, a lot of great colors, and I'm pretty excited to see this at night, so let's check this out.
Yeah, let's go. The theming and lighting on these coasters has been next level. Not often do we get really uh, well-lit coasters for the nighttime experience. I love being able to ride them twice and get that like transformative feel and it, get a whole different experience going on at night. And I think this crater has done a very, very good job at lighting everything up. And again, I just, uh, I feel like they've been very well themed. Very, very well themed. I will say of everything, the creator did ask for some critiques and feedback and I haven't really given a whole lot. I will say that the track coasters or the non-inverts have been particularly a little bit better in terms of navigation, exploration, and um, what we got to visually see on them. And I can see why that would be more challenging on an inverted coaster, for sure. You try to give them more open feel, but uh, because the, the, the nature of the tracks being inverted and hanging like that, it's definitely a lot more challenging to do them thematically. But I don't know, I don't know what the critique there is. It's more of a comparison. I'm just wondering if there's a way you can try to improve on that for next time because I feel like the experiences for the non-inverted coasters have been night and day better. Much, much more eye candy and, and fun theming throughout. This uh, Christmas area is really amazing. The sleigh cruise. I feel like I should be going around this at nighttime, shouldn't I? But it's been looking really good at daytime. Definitely not slouching on the theming. Over the top theme park so far. Absolutely amazing. Okay, a fun sleigh ride. I don't know how many coasters we've been on, but it's we're probably getting up there towards the 10, if not hit them all by now. But we got a, a sleigh ride to slow down the pace a little bit. Definitely don't see these a lot because they're very specific to that of the Christmas experience. But this should be pretty fun. Now the creator, <laughs> submitted this the day before Christmas. <laughs> this would have been a, a fun one to do for a Christmas special and start here, I guess. But yeah, it's pretty, uh, pretty niche to get the Christmas theming going in Planet Coaster. People generally just do a whole Christmas park or just uh, don't include them at all. So fun, fun and fitting to uh, squeeze this into your alpine frozen area for sure. Definitely feel good vibes over here. Gingerbread house. This is quite cozy. Oh. Um, I just realized that this is the, what we're looking at there is the backside of the um, the giant what's it called temple jungle temple I was looking at it or we're walking through here and I thought oh that's really clever how you dusted snow on the backside of that giant mountain that's in fact the big temple yeah, that's a very good job dusting that. The snow is blown and stuck to the side of the mountain there. Makes it more fitting to be in this side of the park. I love it. Absolutely freaking love it. All right, let's wrap around. This probably brings us back to the park entrance. It looks like we have a second wooden coaster. Well, the first one was freaking amazing. So the Arctic chill. Wow. Even uh. The choice of plants and stuff in this area is really vibrant. Look at this. Amazing. Arctic chill. Well, this one's tucked off at the very kind of like side of the park. I'm, ho I'm hoping it's as detailed and explorative as the... Uh, as the previous one was. I think my favorite coaster in this park so far was that last wooden coaster. So I'm hoping this one is just as good. Although that last um, fantasy coaster was really good too. I think that's my second favorite 
So what do we got going on here? 1.2 kilometers in length. <laughs> 70 miles per hour, 47 meters is the biggest drop. I don't remember the stats of the Woody by now, but I feel like this one's a little faster. The Arctic Chill. I'll cut to it when it's ready. Okay, let's do it. Right, absolutely fantastic. Not nearly as good as the original uh, theming on the first Woody that we went on, but harder to accomplish because of the Alpine theme. But we had some really cool caves, some great uh, back areas here. Maybe a, a few more cabins and ski resorts or a, a chairlift or something that we passed by. Maybe could have just brought it over the top, but I love the cave networks on this one as well. Uh, after seeing what you did with the Winter Fantasy, it's, it's almost like we should have went on this one first. <laughs> because it would just make the other one feel that more, much more awesome. But the idea here is this is more of that Alpine adventure. So I think having a little bit more of those, uh, what you did with the boarding station, it's like, you know, really fun and alpine-y. If you could have somehow put a little bit more of that throughout the experience, I think that could have been pretty fun. In comparison to what you've done with your previous ride so far, I'm just trying to think what could you have added to bring that out a little bit like we've experienced so far. But absolutely incredible stuff. Let me make sure uh, we've hit everything by going to the ride list and see if we can find any more hidden gems. Oh, look at this. I found us a traditional corkscrew. How did I not notice this? Probably because all the tracks are kind of white-ish in this area, but I did. I do remember passing by this, and for whatever reason, I thought that was the theming to uh, something we had been on. But this, yeah, this is kind of what I was talking about is that kind of white frozen fantasy is what I've kind of was hoping to see a little bit more of, but you have it right here. So this looks like a little bit on the smaller side. Yep, 300. 46 meters by far the shortest coaster by nearly a mile or a kilometer <laughs> in comparison to what we've seen so far uh even shorter than the sleigh ride let's check it out Short and sweet, but a fun bonus coaster there. Let me uh, make sure we haven't missed anything else.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, I have checked the ride list. We have officially gone end to end to end. Uh, I'm actually kind of surprised that that didn't take two hours. I guess there is this part of the park that hasn't been themed. From this angle, it looks end to end, but there is a tiny little bit more <laughs> that could have been squeezed in, but definitely an end to end theme park. I'm um, surprised it didn't go to a full hour and a half like some of these end up doing. I don't know the reason for that, but I, I definitely feel like we thoroughly walked around all of the different areas just happens to be majority of this stuff is the theming for the coasters so i would say in, in some ways this is a quality over quantity and most of the quantity being of that of the quality rides they were very over the top really thematic coaster experiences and most of it all like i mentioned earlier all of this was built for like the theming of the coaster the path is run through with some shops added in and it created for a very immersive and very thematic coaster experience so what we've seen through other parks in the past is many, many rides being squeezed in the same amount of space, which definitely stretches out the time of the episode a lot more. But I personally feel like I enjoy this experience a little bit more where the focus is these long one kilometer plus coaster experiences with just over the top incredible visuals through and through. A few of those that I thought were done particularly the best was uh, the adventure coaster, the the giga coaster over there the pirate wooden coaster has got to be my favorite in the whole park uh it was very fun exploring with that one and then the fantasy giga coaster over here was just incredible absolutely those are my top three and i think they were just done impeccably well well done uh, the inverted coasters need a little bit of work some of the track is a little bit janky or looks a little bit strange <clears throat> it's just kind of sprung about i don't know how you would make this improve upon this i know the concept was you wanted it to feel flying but a lot of the times it's just a lot of the track up in the air looking down at the water uh, i think you need to try to somehow use the terraforming to your advantage and integrate a little bit more of those mountains and stuff to make that work I don't really know the exact solution. If you guys have any ideas, throw them down in the comments below for the creator. Um, but I felt that way about the Captain Lockjaw inverted coaster too. So having them right next to each other back to back, there was a little something, a little bit of that magic that we had on the other coasters missing from those in particular, uh, as well as the one over here for the Northern Lights. I think this was the best out of the three because it was so like, it's kind of buried down here, right? We're going through these canyons and we really feel like we're coming down low and then going up high and it has a lot more of that high and low elevation with just crazy amounts of theming those are the reasons that i think it worked a lot better for this one <clears throat> there could be some improvements to the inverted coasters but generally speaking all of these coaster experiences have been just over the top awesome oh yeah this one here was also really really amazing definitely also in my top three i don't know how i would yeah it was probably about an equal experience to that of the fantasy coaster to me they're tied for third i would say great explorative thematic coaster experiences and to my previous point was going on a little bit of a tangent saying is when i go to these big giant mega parks and looking at all this stuff i like it when the creator puts a lot of the theming and a lot of the visuals to the coasters themselves it's like we're going on a coaster park experience rather than a, a theme park experience now in terms of feedback and stuff other than like yeah maybe you can improve some of the flying coasters and close them in a little bit like you did with this one over here uh path work was a little bit messy at times right like we're seeing like all of these crazy intersections that lead back into the same areas and i felt like there some of them were a little repetitive and unnecessary and that is just the creator having fun building this stuff and and then trying to kind of work out from there they said they started in the middle and sprawled out so what happened is we got like weird conjunctions and weird forking points that really didn't have any rhyme or reason other than to take you back to the place that you started not that there's anything wrong with that but i do find that just like centralizing your paths and creating a plan and mapping it out could definitely go a long way but this park was created by the person wanting to do an adventure area having fun and then it just got out of control got out of control got out of control and sometimes when you don't have a plan you could create some pretty amazing stuff and that's what we saw from this park here today but then the path work itself did get a a little bit uh congested at times so all i would say is if you're gonna go this big 
and you're gonna go this crazy, uh, just try to like map out your general areas and how you want that path work to be and how you want everything to flow around and then work from there. What you'll have is a little bit more space to do your thematic rides and you might be able to organize it a little bit better. And again, bringing it back to the top of the video, we started things off with the three different areas, Shipwreck Lagoon, the Forbidden Jungle, and the Frozone. And you can see them pretty much Pirate over there, Winter over there, Adventure in the middle. Very, very cool concept to just take the whole map and just run three massive themes all the way down the middles. And I think that was actually a really cool concept here. Taking your three favorite themes, running with it, making them all feel very diverse and i think those are three good choices to make them all stand out one from another the pirate the adventure and the frozen very contrasting made it so every part of the experience was different from the other and it never really got stale it never got repetitive and i thought that was amazing best of all the coaster experiences themselves were just over the top thematic and i think that's what did it for me is the rides themselves were very very fun so give it up everybody to alien queen 93 we have a new queen in town come join us on discord i cannot wait to see what you do next i i don't really have a whole lot of feedback for you i think you you just got to keep on keeping what you're doing what you're doing uh is is working for you and I, I just i'm excited to see more from this creator in the future yeah absolutely incredible stuff what did you guys think do you have any feedback for the queen fire away down in the comments below but i thoroughly enjoyed this one here today and i hope you guys did too so thank you all so much for watching and i will see you guys in the next episode of park spotlight bye now <laughs>